Hey folks, it's Ard Wolf. Welcome. The subject of alternatives to D&D has recently come up quite a bit on social media, and I figured I would do a video on the subject. Now, I've been playing RPGs since 1981, and while I played quite a lot of D&D in the 80s, many of those years were spent exploring various alternatives to D&D for my own reason. Whatever reasons you have for wanting to move away from D&D, I'm here to help with some suggestions. Now, the games I'm going to mention are all available either in print or PDF at this time, and I've also limited myself to games that I happen to have in my own library right now. I cannot guarantee that you'll like any of my options, but what I can tell you is that I like all of these games. I think they are fantastic games and I recommend them enthusiastically. So let's get started. So let's say that you want a game that replicates virtually all of the essential features of D&D. It has classes and levels and monsters and dungeons and clerics and wizards and fighters and rogues and those all those sorts of things that you've come to expect. Well, one option, is Rollmaster. Now this is an older edition. This just happens to be the, the what's now called Rollmaster Classic, which is the edition that's currently available. Despite what you may have been told, it is a chart-heavy game, but it is not a particularly complicated game, at least in this edition and in Rollmaster Classic. There is uh, another edition called the Rollmaster Standard System or Rollmaster Fantasy Roleplaying, which does add a great deal more complexity. It's a percentile system with open-ended rolls, open-ended high and low. So if you roll, say, 97, you roll again, add the 97, so you could end up with a number like 200. And you could potentially open-end multiple times. But you can open-end low as well. So if you roll a 0, 2, then you roll again and subtract that number from 0, 2, and you could have a really bad roll as well. All options are on the table. The fundamental basis of the system is relatively simple. You have a skill bonus. You have potentially situational modifiers. You roll percentile dice, add your skill bonus, and you look the result up on a table. There are a lot of tables, but in practice, we always find, and we played this game for a long time, for the better part of a decade, Rollmaster was the main RPG that I played. Um, we always found that as long as the Game Master was prepared and the players also were prepared with whatever combat tables they needed to have on hand, that it actually runs very smoothly. I will tell you that combat can be spectacularly and messily deadly with the infamous Rollmaster critical hit tables, which are a joy to just read through. If you'd like to see additional uh, video content on Rollmaster, please let me know. Now let's say you want to stick with fantasy, but you have a historical bent. You have an interest in doing a historical fantasy. Well, this game from Atlas Games called Ars Magica, this is the fifth edition, this is the edition that's currently available, is a really great game. This is another game that was my primary game for the better part of a decade, different decade. Um, this is a D10 system. Um, it has extremely detailed magic rules, as you'd expect. It is a game about primarily playing wizards. Wizards are the most important characters in Ars Magica, but they are not the only characters. There are other important characters as well. Ars Magica also enc encourages something called troop-style play, which is an idea that you've seen elsewhere, but it more or less originated in print with Ars Magica, that each player will have multiple characters, and on any given adventure or quest or mission or what have you, um, you'll pick one one of your characters to take along. There are also, so you have Magus characters who are the wizards and you have companions who are the really competent and important but non-wizards. And you also have grogs who are basically henchmen. They're relatively low level guys. All of these characters together are collected in an organization called a covenant, um, which presumably usually will have a facility that they operate out of and managing that facility and doing things over long periods of time uh, is a feature of Ars Magica. If you are interested in long-term play, long-term in the context of the campaign, where the campaign might take a year of real time to play, but takes 30 years of campaign time to play, then Ars Magica is a game that you should definitely check out. Another game that's really good at long-term or generational play is this game. This is King Arthur Pendragon. Uh, this is not a Chaosium edition. Chaosium is the original publisher and the property is back with Chaosium now. Um, the current edition, I think, looks much like this, but this is a slightly older one that was actually done by White Wolf, believe it or not. Um, so this is a game about Arthurian knights. King Arthur will be an important sort of central character that exists in the background for part of the campaign. It's a really neat game. It is uses a variant of the basic role-playing system. Now, 
BRP is a percentile system, but uh, Pendragon adapts that to use a D20. Um, there are certain mechanics like passions that uh, have now been moved into the original BRP game, which is RuneQuest in its current edition. So this is another game, uh, particularly if you have a liking for Arthurian myth. This uh, is it, it really does a great job of synthesizing all those different sources of Arthurian legend into a role-playing game and making that experience really memorable. We played a campaign of this a few years ago as well. Now, speaking of basic role-playing, the originator of bas the basic role-playing system is, in fact, in print again. This is a new version of the RuneQuest 2nd Edition rules, and you can get this from Chaosium as well. It's in a nice hardcover. There might be a software version as well. And this is a very old-school approach. Same basic system, same percentile-driven play. In RuneQuest, you are a part of the world, and the game system really integrates you into that setting called Glorantha. Now, there's a new edition of RuneQuest 2, which is this book, which is also available in this very big and very attractive slipcase set, which is how I have it. Uh, but this is the current version of the game, and this is a $55 hardcover. You could probably find it for less. It's a beautiful book. Uh, from Chaosium. Really well done. This is actually my current RPG reading right now is this new edition of RuneQuest. It brings in a lot of modern ideas. It is not what I would call a super light system, um, but it's not hugely complicated either. Well worth checking RuneQuest out in any of its incarnations. Wrapping up this whirlwind tour of fantasy games, I'm gonna show you something relatively new. It is a game called Forbidden Lands. There is an unboxing video of this on the channel. I recommend checking it out. And what this is is a, a new fantasy game from a Swedish developer that emphasizes a style of play called hex crawling, which is a very old school way to play. It's a really neat looking game. It's not hugely expensive. You can get it on Amazon, and I recommend, I haven't played this one yet. All the other games on the list I've played, but I feel strongly enough about this one, and I favor that play style so much that I felt this was worth checking out. Not a particularly complicated system, definitely less complicated than D&D, um, but worth, worth your time to check this thing out. But let's say that you want to start to move away from fantasy entirely. Maybe you're bored with it or whatever reasons you have. What if you were looking for a horror game, for example? Well, um, one game that is available right now is Call of Cthulhu, and this is a game that dates from the very early 80s. It is also available from Chaosium in a very nice new edition, including another very large slipcase set. I found myself really attracted to beautiful slipcase sets. Uh, lately it comes with a screen as well that has a bunch of additional play aids and stuff so totally worth your time it's a classic game also uses the basic role-playing system which this wasn't supposed to be a video about basic role-playing maybe i should do that video this is just about uh, games that are alternatives to DD. and finally the entry that you no doubt all saw coming let's talk about science fiction games my choice of science fiction games is Traveler. This is the current Traveler 5 edition from Far Future Enterprises. That's Mark Miller's company. But what I more strongly recommend at this time is this game. This is the Mongoose Traveler 2nd edition. This is the current edition of Mongoose Traveler, and it is a very nice game. Uh, Traveler 5 is a really big monster of a toolkit and isn't much, in my opinion, of a game to play on its own. If you're interested at all in Traveler, this is where I would go. Either edition of Mongoose Traveler is actually fine, but the, the second edition is what's in print right now. It's getting tremendous support from Mongoose Publishing, and I like it a great deal. So right there, there's a pile of games that aren't D&D for you to check out. Like I said, I can't guarantee that you'll like any of them, but they're some of my favorites. If you'd like some additional information about any of these games, please be sure to mention it in the comments below, and I'll try to do some more video on whatever game you would like to see. Don't forget to like the video if you've enjoyed watching it. Please subscribe to the channel, and if you're inclined to do so, please check out the Patreon, which is linked in the video description. Until next time, happy gaming. <laughs>